Excellent! Hey guys and welcome back to Paul's Hardware. I am absolutely ecstatic to be bringing you guys this video today because this video, this one right here, is my CPU cooler showdown video. Yes, that is correct. I am finally have produced this video, I've run all my tests, I've got my numbers and I'm sharing them with you guys right here right now or at least in a few moments after I've rambled for a little while about uh, about what I have written down here on this paper. I'm trying to keep things organized. Uh, so first off, a, a little bit of history here because this has been a project I've been working on for quite some time. If you want to get specific, almost four months ago was when I first did the Water 2.0 Extreme Unboxing and Overview. And at that point, the idea crept into my head that, oh, maybe I should take this cooler and test it against some other ones that are out there. Um, if it's any indication, there's actually a Water 3.0 Extreme uh, available from Thermaltake now. So this one's still out there too. Uh, from what I've read, they're both very similar. But anyway, uh, from the Water 2.0 Extreme, I also added on the uh, H220 and the H110. And then the most recent addition was the Cooler Master uh, Iceberg 240L Prestige. I should say this is the SwiftTech H220, the Corsair H110. The idea for this video was to take a bunch of high-end closed-loop water coolers, uh, basically to find ones that were better than your typical 240 millimeter radiator, um, whether via thicker radiators or using different materials or a larger radiator, uh, and to sort of pit those against each other and see if you wanted to go beyond 240, what your options were and what, what was going to get you the best performance. Now I've learned a ton throughout the creation of this video because uh, I'll be up front and say that uh, apart from doing some air cooler testing here and there, I've really never attempted to take multiple water cooling units and pit them against one another, another to see um, what kind of performance they got. Another thing that I learned is that if you're going to be testing CPU coolers, it's best not to wait until like the dead middle of the summer when it's just about as hot as it's going to get. Uh, in order to do that, ambient temperatures do play a factor. I am testing here in my apartment and you guys can't see everything, but there's no air conditioning in this room. So um, when the temperature is risen outside, it rises in here a little bit too. So uh, I have corrected all of my results to 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, I've normalized all the temperatures so you can get a still the same basis for comparison. But if you're going for an aggressive overclock, middle of the summers might not be the most ideal time. Uh, next up, I'm going to move into a quick sort of mini review of each one of these coolers. Now, I've done unboxings of each of them already. And uh, as I go into this mini review, you might notice I'm leaning towards the negative side. I'm going to point out stuff that I saw that I wasn't super happy with. So right from the get-go, I want to point out all of these coolers are fantastic. All of them performed really well, and I never ran into anything that I would call uh, a, a, a game-destroying bug or something like that. Um, all of these work just fine. I'm going to point out uh, some, some small issues here and there that you might want to take into consideration if you're looking to purchase each one of them. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with the Corsair H110. Now the Corsair H110 is a 280 millimeter radiator, so this is the larger radiator, but not thicker. Uh, it's pretty standard otherwise. Uh, the larger radi radiator does limit your case options, so bear that in mind uh, when you're looking for a case. If you are going to get this cooler, make sure that you get one that supports a 280 millimeter rad. Uh, apart from that, this is OEM'd by Ace Tech, which is a company in China which makes a lot of the closed loop CPU coolers. Uh, this has the standard Ace Tech mounting system. And I will point out that the Ace Tech mounting system is middle of the road in my book when it comes to CPU cooler mounting solutions. Aftermarket, aftermarket CPU mounting solutions tend to be difficult as a general rule. Um, this one, it's not terrible. They do give you some adhesive so you can apply this plate to the back of the motherboard. Uh, the biggest issue potentially that I saw is if you're installing this on socket 775, 1155, 1156, or 1150, or 1366 for that matter, um, the metal uh, plungers in here when they're actually screwed in from the other side of the motherboard, if you do over tighten those, they can twist around in the plastic bracket at the back here and it can kind of strip out that socket and you'll just keep twisting it over and over again. It's happened to me once and I've talked to some other people it's happened to so bear that in mind if you are doing this in installation. Uh, apart from that I did want to point out that uh, the H110 was the quietest cooler uh, in the roundup and I'm talking about the load temp uh, the load um, the load noise uh, when I'm talking about uh, the noise generated here. I also want to say um, when it comes to uh, noise comparisons amongst all these, that's one thing that uh, I will be including in future reviews is a, a more scientific means of measuring the actual noise generated. Uh, for this review, I'm going to give my subjective 
uh, just what I've heard and what I felt was louder and not as loud. Um, but uh, I'm I'm gonna that's that's one of the things I've learned throughout this process, and I'm hopefully gonna be improving in the future, uh, getting an actual uh, setup to measure the decibel uh, sound pressure, which would be nice. Next up is the Thermaltake Water 2.0 Extreme, and this one has a 240 millimeter radiator, but it is thicker than your typical radiator, which is 25 millimeters thick. Uh, this one is 38 millimeters, or just over 38 millimeters thick. Uh, the Water 2.0 Extreme features USB controls, so you can actually feed a USB down to the header on your motherboard. Uh, it also gives you the ability to monitor the uh, liquid temperature in the loop, which is a nice feature to have. Uh, this also is OEM'd by Ace Tech, so this one features that same mounting system as the H110. Again, not the worst, but uh, it does have that same potential to possibly strip the threads or the plastic uh, backplate um, if you overscrew it. And uh, the other thing is that this one was the loudest cooler in the Roundup. This is a relative measurement. It wasn't crazy loud or anything like that. Um, and of course, you do have the option to lower the fan speed uh, if you choose to so um, that is am amenable but uh, at the speeds that I was te testing at which is 60% uh, and 100% fan speed uh, the water 2.0 did strike me as amongst the louder in the roundup. The next cooler is the SwiftTech H220 so a closer look at that one will reveal that this one is very customized so SwiftTech does uh, higher end water cooling stuff so uh, they've done a lot of work developing this particular one. They've designed it themselves. Uh, this is 240 millimeters again, but this one features copper uh, in the radiator itself. And copper, uh, just by virtue of it, the physical properties of the elements, copper is able to absorb and disperse the heat more efficiently than the aluminum fins of, say, the Water 2.0 or the H110. The other thing about the H220 is that it has a, is an expandable loop, which means if you purchase this, uh, if, you, if you do want to expand it in the future and make your own custom loop, the pump is very strong so you can actually uh, adapt it to add on a, another radiator or two. Uh, you could add a reservoir to the loop for example. You can get your tubing in there and kind of make a custom loop. So it's a starting off point. That's kind of an upsell feature. That This one is also one of the more expensive ones in the roundup so uh, that's also something to bear in mind. But if you are looking to get into water cooling but you don't necessarily want to invest in a whole custom loop right off the bat, that's a, a, a nice option for you. Uh, I will say that the pump is fairly loud on the H220, but it is PWM controllable, so if you have uh, motherboard um, fan control options, you can use those PWM controls to lower the RPMs of the pump, which does lower the uh, amount of noise it generates as well. And then the Helix fans that are included with the H220 are excellent. Uh, they have a really wide RPM range from 800 to 1800 RPMs, uh, and they are more tuned towards silence than they are towards cooling, which I think is why uh, in some other testing out there, Linus's test, for example, when he swapped out the Helix fans on the H220 uh, with some Noctua NFF12s, uh, he was able to drastically improve the performance. Uh, but it does uh, run a nice and quiet, especially if you lower down the RPMs of the fans, so at 60%, it was uh, the quieter of uh, the, uh, the coolers in this roundup. Uh, but that pretty much wraps it up for a mini review of the H220. Oh, I did want to say also that the back plate on the H220 is full metal and impossible to strip. So I did like that feature. And it does also provide some adhesive to stick it on there so that you can line it up properly when you're doing the mounting. Next up, we have the Cooler Master Iceberg 240L Prestige. This is uh, one of the newer ones that's come out. Again, uh, we have a more custom design from Cooler Master as opposed to some of the Ace Tech and Cool Coolit designs that we've seen from a lot of the other water coolers out there. Um, Cooler Master has, again, much like the H20, designed this to be an expandable loop if you decide to. So uh, you have, again, a combo block uh, pump and uh, reservoir all in one that fits on top of the CPU. And it has a little window in it, which lets you look in there and make sure that you got liquid going in there and everything, which is kind of nice, although it's difficult to see when it's actually installed. Uh, it has some wound, winding around the tubing, which helps prevent kink kinking, uh, which is also a nice little feature. Along with the Thermaltake Water 2.0, this was uh, one of the louder coolers in the Roundup, although again, I will say, all these coolers, you can adjust the fan speeds uh, using uh, your motherboard software, and uh, that can drastically reduce the noise that's generated. Uh, and then I also wanted to point out that I was not super impressed with the mounting system for the 240L Prestige, at least if you're going with the socket 1155, 1156, or 1150 solution. Um, you're actually gonna, you'll just have these little plastic plugs that, that pop through the motherboard. There is no back plate. Um, it's easy, but when the plugs are installed, you pretty much need to be able to hold on to the back of the, pl the plug on the motherboard in order to mount the threaded uh, screws from the other side that you actually mount the pump with. 
um, it's it's not the best but I would recommend if you're getting any of these coolers here definitely make sure your case not only supports the radiator itself but also make sure that the case uh, has a open back plate on your motherboard so you can actually access the back of your CPU mounting area. But that's all for the mini review. Let's go ahead and move on to the performance testing area of this video. And I'm gonna start off with giving you a quick rundown of the test bed that I'm using. I am testing in an enclosed system, so it's uh, more of a real world experience, not an open test bed. I'm using this case right over here, which is the NZXT Phantom 630. I chose the 630 because, uh, well, it's a closed case, first of all, it's a real case that you can buy. And I needed something that would fit a variety of coolers, including 240 millimeter, as well as 280 millimeter. For the CPU, I'm using the Intel Core i7 3770K, uh, which is, of course, a third generation Ivy Ridge processor. And I'm running it at the somewhat inadvisable frequency of 4.6 gigahertz and 1.36 volts. Now I did this not because I needed that much voltage at that frequency, but I really wanted to give uh, these high-end coolers uh, a really heavy load to deal with. I'm going to be changing this in the future because at that voltage I was running very uh, at very high temperatures, particularly when the temperature here rose up uh, in the summer months. Um, so I'm going to be lowering that frequency maybe just a tad and definitely lowering the, uh, the voltage quite a bit because that is hitting right up against that area where uh, Ivy Bridge processors tend to, to, to kind of go over the edge and get really, really hot really, really quick. But all the coolers were able to handle it, I'm happy to say. Beyond that, I'm also using an Asus Sabertooth Z77 motherboard, and I also did use uh, the Asus AI Suite software, uh, which has the thermal radar function. I was using that to monitor the temperatures, uh, not just of the CPU, but also the VRMs, because they were heating up a lot, as well as, well as the other uh, uh, connection points on the board. I was also using that to uh, adjust the fan speeds uh, to go with 60% uh, as well as 100% fan speed for the various tests I was running. Uh, I got, also got 16 gigs of Corsair DDR3 1600 memory, uh, 4x4 gig kit. Uh, I do have a video card in there, although it was did not have a load on it, but that's the ASUS GTX 580 Direct CU2. Uh, also for the power, I have a PC power and cooling, 750 watt power supply, and for storage, uh, main operating system drive, Kingston HyperX SSD. And uh, I was running Windows 7 64-bit uh, and for my testing software or the load software, I was using Prime 95, running the small FFT load test uh, or stress test on that. Next up, let's talk about methodology, and this is uh, one place where I learned a lot. When it comes to methodology for CPU cooler testing, I think the most important thing is to maintain consistency. There's lots of different variables that you might uh, roll in there that might ch uh, change the outcome of your tests one way or another, but uh, as long as everything is tested the same, we should get at least... Uh, using these parameters, we should be able to get an apples to apples comparison of all of these coolers. So that said, uh, I was using Cooler Master's Ice Fusion thermal interface material right here. Uh, I chose this not because it's an extremely high-end uh, thermal interface material, but uh, because I have this tub of it, and there's a lot, and I need to do lots of reapplications. It's also fairly easy to, to apply. Um, if you're interested where this falls in the spectrum of thermal interface materials, it's right in the middle. It's not super high-end but it's definitely not terrible or anything either. Uh, I actually came up with a new method using, uh, since this is fairly liquidy, uh, using a, uh, ch a chopstick to dip it in and put a perfect circle dead center on the CPU, which worked quite well. Uh, in between tests, I was cleaning everything off using the Arctic Clean Thermal Material Remover and Surface Purifier, which is fantastic for cleaning uh, thermal grease off. It does an excellent job. Uh, making sure everything is nice and clean as I swapped between CPU coolers. But the testing itself, uh, first, after the uh, cooler was initially installed, I did a one hour Prime 95 small FFT burn in. That was just to uh, liquefy the uh, thermal interface material, make sure it seeped into all the nooks and crannies on the CPU uh, heat spreader as well as on the uh, block from the pump or from the uh, closed loop cooler uh, to make sure that it was getting a nice good contact. After the one hour burn in, I let it rest with the system off for a half an hour. Uh, and then after that, I did uh, 15 minutes with the, CP with the computer booted up to take the idle temperature. For temperature measurements, I'm actually doing the core temperature uh, using the average of all four cores. Uh, after that, I would do another 15 minutes idle. Uh, after that, I would do 15 minutes of Prime 95 small FFT with the fans at 60% to get the 60% temperatures another 30 minute rest at idle to let the temperature drop back down, and then another 15 minutes of uh, Prime 95 with the fans at 100% to get the 100% 100 
fan speed temperatures at full load. Uh, and now I guess it's about time to finally show you guys the results. So uh, again, these results are all normalized to 22 degrees Celsius. And again, I can say that all of these coolers performed very well, um, given the amount of load on the CPU and the temperature that uh, I was creating, all these coolers were able to handle despite it being um, summer here and the temperatures being in the 80s and 90s. Uh, they, they all did a great job. Um, if you're looking at this chart here and you want to pick a winner, that's the H220. Definitely the H220 was the winner, although all of these uh, CPU coolers uh, performed within about 3 or 4 degrees Celsius of each other. Um, so they were all uh, within just just within shouting dif distance of each other, I think, when it comes to the actual uh, results. Um, but I, I will say that uh, any off-the-shelf cooler that can handle uh, Prime 95 small FFT load on a 3770K at 4.6 gigahertz and 1.36 volts is doing a fine job, particularly in the middle of summer. Uh, but again, the H220 uh, is the winner for this particular roundup when it comes to actual temperatures. Uh, although you will see that all the coolers are doing a fine job uh, keeping that CPU cooled down. And then again, if you want to take the uh, acoustics into account, uh, the uh, H220, I'm sorry, the uh, the H110 from Corsair was the quietest thanks to the, I think, the larger 140 millimeter fans, followed by the H220, and then uh, last would be the, the 240L and the Thermal Take Water 2.0 again. But again, uh, these are uh, sound comparisons that are subjective based on what I heard and it's also just between these coolers and I've definitely heard louder coolers than any of these um, when it comes to uh, fan noise as well as pump noise. And that about wraps it up. Uh, let's, let's do some closing remarks. Uh, again, this has been a learning experience for me. I'm going to be modifying my testing methodology for CPU coolers in general in the future. I'm going to stick with the closed system. I think I'm going to lower my CPU frequencies and voltage down just a, just a tad, especially if I want to be testing 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter coolers as well to get them uh, into this ballpark because I am pretty sure that a smaller cooler like a 120 millimeter one uh, just wouldn't even have been able to handle the load I put onto it so if I did have any of those in this roundup I wouldn't even have been able to run the tests. Uh, I'm also going to be looking at uh, doing some audio quality or some some noise generation comparisons as well. I'll be uh, looking into getting uh, perhaps a microphone or something that can actually measure sound pressure uh, a bit more specifically. If not I will just use my microphone to record and give you guys just an actual playback comparison of uh, the different uh, noises that are uh, the amount of noise that's being generated depending on of course the load as well as the fan speed that I'm running. Uh, but I do want to close by saying a huge thank you to uh, Thermal Take, Cooler Master, Swift Tech, as well as Corsair uh, for allowing me to uh, take a, a gander at uh, all of their coolers. Uh, again, any one of these is going to be a great choice for you guys if you're looking at it. Uh, the Swift Tech H220, if I can do one one final thing that you might taken into consideration. These are really hard to find right now. They seem to be in short supply. So if you do find an H220, go for it. If not, again, any one of these other ones will do a fantastic job for you. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, once again, uh, thanks to you guys uh, who, have, who have been waiting on this one. I know I've gotten a lot of comments from people saying, where is the CPU cooler comparison? I know it's been a long time coming, but uh, I'm, I'm moving very soon. Uh, I will be setting up a new area. I'll be getting some new equipment. Uh, I'll be having some dedicated space uh, to do my videos so hopefully I'll be able to crank them out a bit more frequently as well as bring you guys uh, some more testing comparison videos to give you guys uh, some bet some more knowledge uh, and some more stuff to go off of when you're looking at purchasing uh, especially something like this when you're talking about spending a hundred dollars more on just a CPU cooler it's good to, to have some results so you know what kind of performance you can expect also coming up very soon I still have a couple Asus Z87 motherboards so I'm going to be doing some testing with those the Z87 Pro the Z87 Sabertooth so I uh, still got more videos on the way stay tuned for those please toss me a like if you enjoyed this video uh, go ahead and post a comment down below if you were surprised by any of these results or if you'd like to see uh, additional tests in the future I'd love to hear your ideas for that uh, and then of course for the Z87 boards I've already got a lot of excellent comments and feedback on the uh, unboxings I did for those, uh, but I'd love to hear additional stuff because those videos are still to come. Thanks again, everyone, for watching this video, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time on Paul's Hardware.